She has called the same San Francisco apartment home for more than eight decades. Helen Byrne is 94 years old and bedridden. But now her building has new owners and Byrne and her neighbors are facing an eviction. Investigative reporter Hilda Gutierrez spoke with the tenants as they potentially face the last few weeks in their homes. Helen's one wish, stay in the place she's called home since she was a kid. But the new owners say letting the rent control tenant stay isn't part of their business plan. After rejecting a buyout offer, the building's residents are rallying together to fight their new landlord in court. San Francisco's Mission District has changed a lot over the years. Just not at this four-unit apartment building on Cesar Chavez. It's been decades since a new tenant has moved in, and Helen Burns' upstairs apartment is practically a time capsule. When we first moved into here, I was 12 years old. I came with my father and my two sisters, and uh, I've lived here all my life. She still sleeps in her childhood bedroom. After suffering a fall last year, it's where she spends most of her time now. Helen outlived her parents and sisters and lives alone. A lifetime of memories preserved in the photos that fill the apartment. I had my whole life practically right there on the wall. And right now she's strong because this building, this apartment alone makes her feel that she's home. Cecilia Matias also lives in the building and helps take care of Helen. She's been here for 40 years herself. The first apartment her family moved into after leaving the Philippines. She's been very, very good to me. She's like a... a a daughter to me. I told her, you think you don't have a family, but you have, it's me. If you don't, no matter what, I'll take care of you. Even though we're not blood related, I felt like we're closer. Cecilia's sister also lives in the building. So does Anthony Martin and his son, an Iraq war veteran. The building's apartments are rent control, so the rent is a lot lower than today's market rate. And maybe the reason why the new owners have been trying to get them out since 2020, when the building was purchased through an LLC managed by Daniel Mitels. We reviewed emails and letters obtained through the eviction case that Mitels sent the lender and tenants, showing they plan to empty the building from the start. Which came as a surprise to me, actually a shock to me, that I would have to move from here. And... Uh, where would I go? Uh, I'm so, so used to this place. In this 2020 email to the lender, Mitos called the building an almost impossibly good value, adding the purchase price reflects that the property is burdened with four long-term occupants paying a total of just $3,800 or so in total rent per month. So he outlined plans to get the tenants out and rent the units out at a higher price or possibly sell the building vacant at a profit. That just shows that his goal here was speculation. Steve Collier is a managing attorney at the Tenderloin Housing Clinic, a San Francisco nonprofit that fights displacement of low-income residents. I think you have to look at that in the context of potentially destroying the lives of four families um, by kicking them out just so that he can make a profit, um, and I think that's morally wrong. When we spoke to them, and Michaels told us over the phone that he feels bad about the situation, but the tenant's current rent doesn't cover the building's operating expenses. In an email, the landlord's attorney said they are aware of the hardship of the eviction, adding the owner initially attempted to pay the tenant significant money to vacate. However, when all tenants refused, the landlord's only remaining option was to terminate the tenancies under the Ellis Act. A law allowing landlords to evict their tenants if they take the property off the rental market for at least five years. The landlord's attorney also said the Ellis Act was created to resolve unintended consequences of local rent control laws, allowing landlords to quit the rental market when rental rates make it unfeasible to be a housing provider. The tenants had four months to leave but the law allows a one-year extension because of their age. It's often used by speculators to um, empty buildings and then sell them at a greater value. The tenants didn't want to move, and they didn't, also they didn't want to leave Helen. I would like to stay here for the rest of my life. I had all my friends and neighbors that lived here with me. I don't want her to go somewhere anywhere else. You stay here because you grew up here. I will, I will take care of you if I have to. And that's why I'm here. 
But instead of moving out, the tenants turn to the Tenderloin Housing Clinic for help. Their window to leave under the Ellis Act has come and gone, and they're now fighting an eviction lawsuit in court. Even their neighborhood priest, who's known Helen for more than a decade, is standing by their side. It's wrong that, 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 that this is happening. Uh, you shouldn't have to lose the home that you've lived in all of your life and, you, and you've paid your rent and done all the responsible thing. People aren't just numbers to be discarded. Helen and Cecilia face an uncertain future, but they're facing it together. I love you always. Thank you. I love you too. Collier said the tenant's fate could be decided in court soon, possibly in the next few days. He says tenants facing Ellis Act evictions have two choices. Both of them are bad, leave your home or fight an eviction lawsuit. Either way, he says you should always contact an attorney. With the investigative unit, I'm Hilda Gutierrez.